Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not me. Look at Julia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, good morning. <laughs> I appreciate this uh, turnout to come and hear some tips and tricks from the IT department. Uh, my name is Tommy Holder. I'm the director of uh, Information Technology. And this is Monty Chrisman, the associate director. Uh, I do want to take just a minute to tell you a little bit about the department, maybe some of the background that you don't see or don't hear about, but uh, this is our staff. We have currently a staff of 11 different um, people in different positions, and we're actually kind of in the middle of a, of a reorganization. Um, of course, I mentioned Monty and I. Uh, Unix administrator, if you think about Unix, we're talking about colleague, e-procurement, payment gateway, I think so. Um, our our backup system, uh, web advisor. Uh, those are the Unix systems that uh, Jesse Hasso takes care of for us. Server administrator, um, you'll see some numbers in a little bit about servers, but that's Barrett McGee. Um, if you've been here a while, you might remember him as our network tech, but he's uh, uh, been in that position for several years now. Our network administrator is uh, Douglas Arevalo. Care of all of our switches, our ports, everywhere that you plug something in generally is what he's uh, responsible for. The newest position we just created within the last month is an IT security specialist. And what that entails is all of the new, a lot of our new uh, payment card industry requirements that we're held accountable for is a big one. Um, red flag rules, there's, there's a lot of different state and national security standards that we have to maintain and keep up with and uh, it got to the point where we actually really needed a person totally assigned to that task and Karen Sasser uh, just recently was promoted into that position and she's uh, buried in paperwork right now trying to, to get her feet wet learning that new position. Uh, help desk, you might remember Karen was there, but the help desk and lead technician is actually going to be filled by Clint Matthews, our PC tech that was at Harnett for, for many years, is going to actually transition up here to this campus and take over those responsibilities. And then uh, we have four PC techs, uh, David Hare, um, Travis Perry, Evelyn Gomez, and Kevin Luck. Two of those spend most of the majority of their time at the Harnett and uh, Chatham campuses, and the other two are here. So this gives you an idea of 11 people looking after, uh, what I'm going to show you is quite a bit of equipment, but uh, if you attended the physical plant uh, presentation a couple of weeks ago, uh, you got to hear Ronnie talk about all our different sites and uh, square footage. I won't go into all that detail that he did, but uh, you can see, for instance, Harding County, there's um, uh, eight sites listed there, about 12 different buildings that we have to uh, do work in. Lee County, uh, it lists eight different sites there, but there's more to the tune of 29, 30, some odd buildings that, that are in Lee County that we have to uh, maintain equipment in. Chatham has, um, that's around seven buildings actually. Um, some of them we have a very small presence in, some of these, but uh, for instance, Chatham Main Campus and Silo, we have a very large presence of computers, PCs, etc. So, just to give you an idea of what kind of equipment we're talking about, you might be surprised 3,000 computers for this college alone, um, probably somewhere between 2,000 and or so of those are actual desktop PCs that we're maintaining and then another seven or eight hundred laptops, netbooks, uh, tablets, just to give you an idea. And back earlier if you think about four PC technicians are looking after 3,000 some odd computers. So quite a, quite a task that we uh, have to keep up with. But not only that, you might not believe there's 500 and 50 different telephones across the three counties that we're maintaining. 
servers. I mentioned Barrett earlier in servers, uh, Mrs. Barrett and Jesse, but 110 different servers. This has grown exponentially over the last probably five or six years. Uh, we probably had less than 10, less than 20 five or six years ago. Just to give you an idea, that's now over 110. Printers. I didn't know there was this many printers, to be honest with you. 450 printers. Just about every faculty and staff person has a printer on their desk. Uh, cameras. Security cameras. This is this started in 2008. It's grown to over 140 different cameras that we're maintaining over the different sites. And that's not at every site, it's mainly the, the, the eight largest sites. Uh, Douglas, we talked about switches and network, 98 different switches in all the different buildings. A large number of uh, equipment that uh, this team is maintaining. Emergency call boxes, believe it or not, still falls under us as far as uh, if something breaks, they call us first. 16 of those have been installed. There's eight here, four at uh, Arnett, and another four, three or four at the new building at Arnett as well. Wireless access points. Again, this is something within the last five, six years that has populated, and uh, every center and main campus site we have has wireless capabilities. 112 of those that are in the ceilings that you never see, but have guests or when you pull out your laptops or netbooks, that's what you're connected to. And there's 112 of those we're trying to maintain and keep running. Fax machines. We got to learn about fax machines and uh, telephones. Last year we replaced the telephone system, which uh, y'all might remember, and I'm sure you've seen the different uh, capabilities of that. But there's 50 different fax machines at the different sites and buildings. Employee accounts and student accounts, this is mainly Gmail numbers, but 1,100 different employee accounts that we have to create. It's not just Gmail. You've got colleague we have to create accounts for. Um, Active Directory, which you know, it's about probably, in, but in the background, it's Microsoft's way of keeping up with different groups. And, uh, we help with uh, Blackboard's uh, account creations with Amanda's group. This 30,000 is just representative over the last probably four or five years with that Gmail now for students. That's how many accounts have been created. And they're able to keep those accounts if they want. But there's been 30,000 created over the last handful of years. Um, this is our, one of our <laughs> mascots. <laughs> That's what we hear from the users. <laughs> yeah, this is, I don't know what happened. It's, I didn't, I didn't touch it. It was this way when I got in this morning. <laughs> uh, we do have a help desk that's maintained uh, in the past and right now currently still by Karen. And uh, Clint's going to be taking that over. And we also have a couple of people in that group in case Karen's on the phone or Clint's on the phone. It rolls over to other individuals uh, when possible and sometimes you might get voicemail. But uh, just wanted to uh, mention that best way to contact us if you can is uh, by email or by uh, a work order form that's actually out on the intranet and we put the, oh, we have the link yeah, up there. It's oh, okay. You can see it there. Oh yeah, this is a hyperlink when you look at it. Uh, that's the best way to contact us. Um, Karen likes to say if you call her on the phone and tell her the problem, then I walk in the office and interrupt her right after that, and she's still trying to make notes, and uh, it's easy to, to get sidetracked and not create that work order sometimes, and or forget about it. And, um, so the best way you can is to email us. Um, if you have an emergency, and this is not security emergency, if you have a computer emergency, um, you can call us obviously at 7397. Getting into tips and tricks. Um, I'm old enough actually to remember when there weren't mouse or mice on computers, so I don't know if you need, I won't have you raise your hands or anything if you're old enough to remember that. Some of you may be, but anyway, uh, if you remember some of the older uh, WordStar, WordPerfect, they had uh, control Q 
keys that you could use. You didn't have a mouse to go back and forth. But, um, these are some of the, you might remember, you might already know about Control X, Control C, Control V to copy and paste and cut. Um, what you might not realize is there's a, for instance, a Control Z that just undoes uh, the action you just performed. And it, don't just think about word processors or Excel or something like this. It, this could actually just be on a, the window that's uh, on your screen at the time. So it could be Gmail or some other uh, web form or something. Uh, I like the way this one's worded, control Y. I redo that thing I just done needed. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you, you're doing the, uh, maybe the control Z and go back too far and you want to come back, you actually, if you're familiar with some of the redos and undos and, and some of the other ones, you can actually use control Y to do that. Control A will select everything in the window that you're active in. So if you're on a web page, you want to select everything to try to copy and paste it, you can just do control A. Sometimes it's easier, instead of going back and forth to the mouse, you can just sit there and do these control functions. A lot of people are familiar with control P, which is to print. A couple of my favorites are down here. If you have a Windows key on your keyboard, you may never use it. But if you use it, hit it, and add the L to it, it locks your screen. So instead of having to control off the lead, so if you're leaving for the day and for lunch, yeah, and you just want to lock your screen for security purposes, I don't know how many people think this way outside of us. Uh, but you can have Windows L. We'd like you to think that way, Kathy. What's talking? How do you unlock it? That's when you uh, it gives you that screen to, to control off the lead and type in your password again oh, to get okay. back in. It, instead of timing out and locking. It's a way to force locking. And this is one I actually use quite a bit. To, I mean, how many of you can have probably five, ten different windows open on your screen and you want to get back to your desktop to launch something? Windows D will take you straight back to a clear desktop. So you can get back to your shortcuts that you might want to launch from there. So that's a couple that, that I use quite a bit. There are others that, that uh, we didn't put here, but these are some of the more popular ones. Um, this is my team. <laughs> we have had um, we have had switch rooms that actually look something like this that we we have floors, yeah, under floors that we cleaned up over the years. So, um, I'll we'll turn it over to Monty now. Let him tell you a few phone tricks. All right, first thing I wanted to go over was telephones. And that one doesn't have anything to do with telephones. I didn't have a picture for that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so the telephones. And I brought a phone with me because I did want to mention a lot of times you'll hear us refer to soft keys or soft buttons. These four buttons right below the screen are considered soft keys, soft buttons. And they don't have a written name on them. They can change depending on what screen you're in on the phone. And it will tell you at the bottom of the screen what those buttons are. So they, they change, which is why they're referred to as soft keys. Um, so, Voicemail to email. We've only had the phone system up for less than a year, so it's still fairly new even to us. Um, and we've updated it recently, so some things that we did have down has changed on us already. Um, so there's there's still a lot of features that most people probably don't realize and don't know about. Um, the voicemail to email. We set it up so that it forwards voicemails to your email account. You can go in if you want to change that setting. Maybe you don't want emails at all, or maybe you don't want them on your phone. You only check them on your email. I know Philip, um, he's got to where 
I don't know that you ever checked him on your phone. Uh, it was so he locked up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he filled up his his mailbox at one point. We had to go in and change his over to forward, so they didn't stay on his phone. They just went to his email, and that was it. Um, personal preference. I thought that I would be one like Philip that would would want them on my my email, but not on my physical phone. And I ended up, after using it a bit, changed my mind, and I'm more the other way. I don't really use them in my email. Anyway, um, to get to to get to this setting, you can press the message button, which will take you into your voicemails. Uh, I may ask you for your password, type your passcode in, once in that menu, you've got the listen up. I'm sure everybody's gone through and looked at it and seen where they can go in and listen to their messages. If you keep scrolling down, further down, there'll be an email option. Yes, email option. I have to read my notes. Yes. Let them know that they don't have to write this down, that the long version. Yeah, we've got another version of this PowerPoint that goes into more detail. And it will be available out somewhere. I'm not sure where. Um, yeah, Daisha was going to attend and she ended up having to cancel, so I'm not sure where she's going to put it in the Blackboard section, maybe. But there'll be there'll be a longer version available that will have more details so you don't have to take notes. Uh, you'll scroll down to email and you can change it from off so that it doesn't send an email with your voicemail. You can change it to copy, which is what we defaulted to, or forward so it doesn't stay on your phone. It gets sent to your email and, and you don't have to delete it off your phone. There's a fourth option as well, notify. And it will send you an email letting you know you have a voicemail. We don't mention it, it's there. I don't know how useful it is, but it's there if you would like to play with it. Uh, or alert is what it's called. And I've got that in our full list. Uh, voicemail setup. When when we first moved over to the new phone system, we told everybody we left a little card by each of the phones to dial star one seven and walk through the voicemail setup. Most people went through, we still have a handful of people that haven't ever set that up, and it's kind of a generic greeting. There's an extra step in there that a lot of people have, have overlooked. It's easy to overlook and miss this. It's a greeting. There's two different parts in the voicemail setup. They're setting up your name, that's just Monty Crystal. But there's also a greeting that you can go in and set up. And if you don't set up the greeting, you'll hear the, the generic message, um, welcome to Avaya, IP office, voicemail, Monty Crispin is not available, yada, yada, yada. And if you've ever heard someone's voicemail, you've probably heard that message before. You can set up your own greeting. Thank you for calling Central Carolina Community College. I'm not available today. I'm out of the office in a presentation about IT tips and trades. Uh, please leave a message. So you can go in and change your greeting. And I've got the, the instructions. I won't go through all the instructions, but if you haven't, go through and set that up. It's more personalized greeting. And you can, you can go through, give your department or whatever you'd like to tell them. Transfer call to someone else's voicemail. I don't know how often this comes up, but we decided to put it in here because it is a very simple step. If you're on the phone with somebody, want to transfer a call to a voicemail box, not an individual, but a voicemail box, you can just press the message button and it will 
give you a, an option to either search the directory or if you know their extension, you can type it in and hit send and it will send them straight to their voicemail box. So they don't have to wait for it to ring and ring and ring and ring. If you know they're not there, you can, you can send it straight to voicemail. Send key. Which key is the send key? Okay, does it send it's key? a soft key. It's a soft key. Okay. Yes. So you'll you'll hit the message button when you're on the phone with somebody. It'll ask for an extension. You'll type it in, and once you start typing it in, it'll pop up and give, tell you whose mailbox it is, just so you know you typed in the right one. And then. Using Visual Voice, which is the message key, you can also record messages using this and send them to people. Rather than calling their voicemail box, you can actually log into your, your messages where you have listen. You can go down to message and record a message right on your own phone and then tell it, okay, I want to send this to uh, these four people. So you can send a message to your department or your, uh, your co-workers. And that's in that same, that same message button. Creating soft buttons. Soft buttons are, we've got some soft buttons over on the sides as well. We've set four of these up already. Three of them are the line buttons. You've got three lines but you've also got a do not disturb button. So you can just press that and it sets your phone, toggles your phone to do not disturb. You can set up your own soft keys as well. It's not very, it's difficult to find if you don't know it's there. Um, so I'm, I'm sure most people don't know that that's a capability, but you can go up and set a quick button for uh, calling, I want to call Tommy's cell phone. And so I don't want to have to remember his phone number. I call his cell phone all the time. I can make a quick button. So I just press the button and it will call. Um, that's one of the features. You may have noticed one of the, when you're at the home screen, you'll have features as a soft button. And it's too much to go through right now. Please go through our, our list, our instructions later. Um, but you can set up different buttons for quick calls. Very useful. And personal directory. Has anyone started using the personal directory at all or have they noticed? You go into your contacts. So you can pull up the contacts of everybody at the college. There's a one of the soft keys is new, so you can create your own contact, and that's personal to your phone. Um, you can use it to, if somebody calls, we use it for most of the time for vendors. Uh, we get vendors that call every day over and over and over and over and over, regardless if we tell them not to. So I've gone through and I've set up a, a contact for that vendor so I can look and see, okay, it's this vendor, just ignore it. Don't even answer the phone. Um, <laughs> that's most useful for me. Now, Day, daily problems. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> and I've told them so many times to stop calling me. It doesn't help. So, soft key or the personal directory helps instead. But you can use it for um, uh, the example with Tom's cell phone. I can put his cell phone number in there so that, or one of our techs, a lot of times our techs will call us from out in the field when they don't have a phone that they can get to. So I can put their cell phone number in there so I can, I can see, okay, this is David calling from his cell or Evelyn calling from her cell. So I can, I can know to maybe give that higher priority. Um, and you'll just go into contacts Press the contacts button, and there'll be a new button. 
compress that. Yes. If it's a long distance, do you put in the nine, the one, and the, all the numbers? Yes. And if you're, if it's, it's a little bit complicated there. If it's an outgoing call, you need to put the nine in. But if it's an incoming call, it's not going to have that leading nine because obviously they don't have to dial nine to get to us. So it won't have that there. If you're trying to call out, though, you do need that nine. Um, yes? Sometimes you'll get a voicemail from a long distance number and you listen to the voicemail, you want to call that person back. And it's, there's a button right there that says call, but you can't use it because it doesn't have the nine and the one. So is there a way? <laughs> I will have to get back to you. Yes. I've, I've actually had that too. I just dialed, I picked up the phone, I dialed nine, and then I pressed the call. Oh, like I'm still on the phone with the voicemail. That okay. work usually. And then, yeah, I just tried it and it happened. I guess. Okay, yeah, so he was, yeah, out, he was yeah. out of the language, so. Yeah. So I ended up writing the number down. <laughs> I didn't want to do that, so I just played with the phone. But I did that. So did everybody hear idea. those solutions? <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to take your job. <laughs> so, you'll finish off the presentation. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Conferencing. We do have conferencing available with the new phone system. Uh, with the old system, we were actually limited to having three of yourself and three other people on a call. That's no longer the case. You can keep adding people. When we were testing the new phone system, before we had it all set up, we had, I think we got up to 10 or 11 people on the phone, and then we ran out of phones to test with. So it's, it's not limited to one person per line. You can just keep conferencing more people in. Up to, I think the, the limit is 64. So, yeah, it's it's a lot. If you're going to do that many, let us know that because we don't have all that many outgoing lines. <laughs> so it's, we'd have to get creative to some extent. Can you record? Yes. Um, let us know ahead of time. I know a couple of you have have recorded conferences before. Um, if it's it was at max one hour, I think was it you that? Uh, yeah, I broke it into two. Okay, yeah, but it was, it was an, an hour max. An hour at a time. Or wait, was it? Oh, maybe it was. But it was a very long conference, and I, it broke it up though when it sent it back to me and they. Or no, you had to give it to me in the server. Yeah, it, it works. It, it actually sends it to your voicemail. However, if it's a, a really long conference, the email will be too large for Gmail to handle, and it, it'll reject it. And if that's the case, then you let me know, and I can dig it out of the server and send it to you. Yeah. Yeah. And we can help you set up a, a soft key for recording conversations. And it, it will do the announcement when you press the button. And it's not just conference calls, it's phone calls that you can record as well. But it does the announcement warning this call is being recorded for legal purposes. <laughs> now they can also call the help desk and set up a conference call too. Yes. There's two ways to do it. You can do it on your own, but you can also call the help desk and we can set up a room. Yeah, we've, we've got them. five rooms that we've created. Uh, so if you didn't want to do everybody calling in or you calling each person, we can set up a room ahead of time and they can call in and enter in a, uh, the room number and then the, the passcode to get into the conference room. So we can we have a Debbie connect, and that's what I was thinking about. Is we don't have a bridge, so that might be a, free, a less expensive alternative. Right. Yeah, as long as there's not too many outside calls, we can set them up or set a room up. If there's going to be a lot, then we'll need to, need to find an alternative outside of the college. Now, internal calls, if they're people within the college, 
and yeah, have at it. We we don't really have the sixty four limit to a rent is what limits us there. And when we say the college, it could be any campus. Yes. You can dial them four digit and then you can get them in the conference call without tying up an outside line. Um, local long distance routing. <laughs> Smart boards, I tell you. <laughs> All right. Um, local long distance routing. In our old system, and I don't know, there weren't many people that that did this, but it it used to be where if it was a long distance call for us here, and it was going to be a local call for Chatham or Harnett. We could actually dial a number, star 81, 82, 83, depending who you wanted to dial through. And you could call through one of the other campuses. Um, we've made this an automatic process in the background now. If you dial a number that is a local call to uh, Harnett County, for example, but it would be long distance to us. Even if you try and dial it long distance, it's going to recognize that that number is local to Harnett, and it will send it out to Harnett uh, and handle that automatically for you. So I know we've had we had some people that that used that before, but we've taken that away and made it easier. It does it all without without any intervention on your side. Yes. I had a question about the phones. Um, the using the directory. How do you get the like the B, for example, if somebody? Does that make sense? First name. Yes, by first name. But I mean, just how do you get to that letter? Because I can never. Uh -huh. If I push oh. it, I get multiple A's instead of number okay. E. It with the directory. So you hit contacts, and you want to look for. Bob. Bobby Wickers, Bill. Bill Freeman. Billy. If you press the ABC button, it's, even though you're seeing A's, it remembers A, B, or C. So you'll hit the two for ABC, you'll hit the four for GHI, and then it says, okay, I can use any combination of ABC and GHI. Then you'll hit the five for JKL, and it'll start narrowing that list down and give you all the possibilities. You may see some A's in there still. Uh, eventually, it will it'll narrow itself down enough that you'll you'll most likely get what you need, or at least have a smaller list where you can scroll. But yeah, don't don't worry about having to hit it multiple times. Otherwise, you'll end up. A A or don't think old style text. Yeah. <laughs> spell their name. Yeah, spell their name. Let the system <laughs> work out for you. It. it doesn't tell you it's doing that, but it's it's handling all of that for you. You don't need to tell it A B or C. Okay. We can transfer to call and switch forward to the science building and transfer them. The is the best to get complete at the end or transfer? Yeah. I mean, we just we would tell them to complete. So really are. Please. That's best. that's what I always that's use. Best. Uh, okay. Yeah, and that that will that will let them the caller hear the ringing and until okay. it picks up. And complete the call. Yes. So when you type in your phone, you can use either first or last name. First, first name. Oh, first name. First it's, name. It, it'll or be by first name. We had a choice: first name or last name. Um, Was, that was the easier of the two, or not the easier of the two, but the, we had the reverse when people called in uh, and wanted to search by name. If we had made it last name on here for internal, it would have messed that side up. We, we went through that fight when we were originally setting it up, and we had to leave it first name. Some people use their middle name instead of their name. Uh, it will be whatever they tell us they want their name to be. Um, 
for example, Tom. He's in here as Tom. His first name is not Tom. <laughs> Chester. <laughs> so anyway, it, it's in the system as Tom. <laughs> we keep things fun. Yeah. If you have somebody with the same first name like John, do you just keep spelling to continue spelling their last name? give you a list. Yeah, you may have to scroll through it. So okay. if it's five Johns, you might have to scroll down and see which John one. Okay. Talking about the name David because there's like ten of them. We have a lot of yeah. Yeah. All questions? Anyone? All right, Gmail. Um, and Gmail search options in in email. I'm not sure how how much people actually use the search in Gmail, but I think a lot. A lot. Yeah. Okay, a lot. okay. Well, I can maybe skip that. Um, I mean, Google. That's how they started, and I just wanted to to comment on that to make sure people were using the search in Gmail. They started off as a searching company. That's how they they started. So obviously they know how to do searches. Um, I've spoken to some other colleges and their IT department, they don't use Gmail, but they have all of their help desk emails forwarded over to a Google account just for the searching capabilities. Uh, it is very powerful. Obviously everybody here realizes that and maybe it's, maybe I don't need to make that announcement. Sounds like everybody knows. Some people might not know. Yeah, and hopefully they listen to our presentation and, and use the Gmail. But I, I wanted to comment on that. Um, out of office or vacation auto reply. If you go into your settings, and you can set this up ahead of time as well. Uh, so if you know you're going to be out of the office the following week, you can tell it. Starting Monday, I want an auto reply set up, and you can tell it start and end date, you know, what what you want in your email. Um, I know for myself, a lot of times I'll forget to put the out of office vacation auto reply in, but it's there. It's uh, you go up to the gear icon in the top right corner, go to settings. And just scroll down it'll be near the bottom send mail I'll, I'll touch the board <laughs> send mail using your alias um, an alias is a different presentation for your email for example and that may not make sense let me give you an example my email address is mchri324 Nobody's going to remember that, except for me, the 324 piece. My alias is M. Christman. That's much easier. may not remember how to spell Christman, but uh, it's easier to remember that. So, and a lot of times that's what we'll put on our business cards or on the directory online or give to somebody else because it's much easier to tell them that email address. You can actually send emails using your alias. By default, it will use your email account, so MCHRI324. You can set it up, uh, and I've got some instructions for it, but you can set it up so that you can, when you send an email, it defaults using MCRISTMAN instead, your alias. Uh, that way, it, it's easier for someone to, to recognize an email from you and you don't need to give them your your username you can't make this up you can't make up something else this right <laughs> yeah. uh, and the steps I have and they're a little bit detailed but luckily you only have to go through it once um, 
but it will go through and and you verify that yes, that is my email account. Um, it, it's very handy. I would recommend it. Yes. Can Gmail allow you to to type in an email now and send it on a delay? Not that I've seen. That's one of the things I I missed about Groupwise because I use that a lot. As with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 you guys just didn't know how evil I was. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> hey, if you're typing his name out on the directory, it's 666. Yes, it is. There's a reason for that. <laughs> oh. Uh -uh. <laughs> Anytime Billy Freeman talks to me, he reminds me of the 666 every time. <laughs> Just so you know, I have to type 666 to get to your name. Yes, I know. <laughs> Payback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, phishing. Does everyone know what phishing is? Phishing is a technique 